Hey, what's happening? This is Pastor West, and I'm coming to you with another Rally Point moment. And today, I want to continue our conversation from last week when we talked about how important and how valuable your yes is. You know, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no, because anything other than that is from the evil one. As a matter of fact, in that same scripture in Matthew 5, 33 to 37, he says that do not uh, make any oaths or make any false claims. In other words, don't say things that you're not going to do. You know why? Because your yes, your yes is so big, your, cre- your yes creates trust. I want to talk to you today about why your yes creates trust. You see, Jesus said that do not make any false statements. Don't say things that you're not going to be able to do. That's why he told his disciples to let their yes be yes and their no be no. So they would not make any false uh, uh, false oaths or false claims. You see, back in the time of Jesus, people would make their oaths on, on Jerusalem. They would make a, a, an oath on the temple itself. They wouldn't make an oath on anything. I'm sure that in your lifetime, someone has said to you, I'll do it, I promise you I'll do it, I swear on my... And you can fill in the blank. So, we make oaths, we make promises that we don't keep. And that's why our yes has to be yes, because if our yes is yes, that means that we can be trusted. See, before a man can be trusted, he has to put his trust in something or someone else. See, our trust has to be in God. God above. And if our trust is in God, then what happens is God comes in, he starts to do some work in us, he starts to transform us, he starts to remake us, and then all of a sudden we become trustful, trustworthy to those around us. And it's easier then for those around us to see the God in us because now they can trust us. That's how important your yes is. That's why it's so important that you commit to your yes being yes and your no being no it creates trust if they can't trust you how can they believe you you know God wants us to be trustworthy because when we claim and we say that Jesus Christ saved my life and he can do the same for you they need to believe us and if you're a man that your yes is yes and your no is no then you're trustworthy and when you say let me tell you about my savior Let me tell you about my Lord, Jesus Christ. It'll have some weight behind it. And not only that, you'll end up up having a better marriage, a better uh, uh, relationship with your children because they can trust you. When you say, honey, I'm going to build a project. Honey, I'm going to do this. Then they know that it's going to be done because you're a man of your word. When you say, son, we're going to go camping. Son, I'm going to do this with you. They know that it's going to get done because you're a man of your word. When you say, daughter, I'm going to buy you this dress. Daughter, I'll take you off for ice cream. Whatever that might be, they'll know that it's going to get done because you're a man of your word. And your yes is yes and your no is no. And I get it. Sometimes it's hard because life gets involved. Things happen and it's hard for us to keep our word. But we have to struggle, we have to fight, we have to hold tightly to owning up to the things that we say. It creates trust. Do you want to be trusted? Do you want to be a man that when you say something, people believe you because you always follow through, you always do what you say you're going to do, you say what you mean, and you do what you say? Is that you? Or are you the guy that no one listens to because you can't be trusted? Well, I don't know about you, but I want my yes to be yes and my no to be no. And again, I understand the struggle with that. Because life comes in, things happen. But we have to really fight, and really struggle to own up to our word when we give it. That's why we have to count the cost. We actually have to look at it. We have to think about it. We have to pray on it sometimes. And that doesn't mean that we should be wishy-washy and never want to make a commitment, never want to uh, own up to anything because we're afraid that we can't follow through. That's not what God's looking for either. He's looking for men that aren't afraid to stand up and say, yes, I'll do it. And when they say, yes, I'll do it, then they do it. Or if they say, no, I can't do it, then they can't do it. But they own up to their word. That's what God's looking for. Is that you? Hey, if it's not you, it's not too late. All you have to do is just take a little step. 
Start, start owning up to your word. Start not being afraid to say yes or to say no. You don't have to say yes to everything. Some things you can't do. If you can't do it, then say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. But own up to it. Say, I can't do it. And then follow through. Or say, I can do it. And then follow through. So often we want to please everyone. So we say yes to everything. And then we realize we can't do everything. And we find ourselves in a trap. Count the cost. But when you do give your word, stand by it. Hey, I'm Pastor Wes Pennington. And this has been a Rally Point moment. I thank you once again for coming in and checking us out. Hey, continue to support. Continue to go to our website, rallypointmensministries.org. Uh, we have so much going on there. Check that out. And, and you know, come to our Saturday morning meetings. We meet every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. It's just one hour out of your Saturday morning. If you're in Rhode Island, anywhere in Rhode Island, come. 75 Division Street, uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, Sacred Exchange Fellowship. We'd love to see you come through and meet with the men and, and just be what God's called you to be. But it all starts with a simple yes. God bless you. Once again, I'm Pastor Wes, and we'll see you next time at the next Rally Point Moment.